Hello everybody. Uh, Dark Hello here. Now, uh, ship's printer. There's a lot of variety, a lot of different ones you can make for for your game, for your server. This specific one is more give, geared towards the keen servers. Uh, again, simply because there are limitations. If you really want to print easily, you know, this whole frame could have just been a wall of printer. But for example, on the Keen servers, we do have the scenario where uh, and I just started the whole process. We do have the scenario where uh, there's a five block limit on the amount of welders you can build, equip, add. Well, actually, you have a five block limit in total uh, for you as a player. So, firstly, as you can see, what I have set up here is this long row of pistons. It's going to go at about 50 blocks backwards. A projector, we have our first block on. Um, very specifically, I've got this projector set up just to show. Uh, only buildable blocks, but if you look at it, I'm uh, building a leather back, uh, what we've as a faction called leather backs. Slight modifications on it, but yeah. So I've got the first buildable block, buildable block is over there, the catwalk over there. So, projector is running across. It's going a little bit slow, I don't have it on max speed. Now, uh, to max it out, so firstly, if you're building this on a server, if you're going to run a print, the max welding speed is going to be affecting how fast you want this thing to run. Because you do want it to weld the stuff before it goes on to the next thing. So, it's going to be a tough call, um, A, because this is going to take a while to build this thing. But at the same time, it is automated. You can go on and do something else. But at the same time, how the keen servers work is, or most servers for that matter, is while a player is 50 kilometers from this grid, uh, it will still be loaded in memory. But as soon as I log off from the server, or any specific player there's no player within 50 kilometers or so no faction mates no other players around me uh, this is not going to be welding or actually not going to be active just want to make sure yeah they're on so if there's no players around it's not going to be welding now, you might say, okay, but what about refineries and those kind of things that is running in the background? So, for example, everybody logs off, servers, nobody is close to your grids and you get back on. You have refined material, your assembler has produced material, your batteries has run out of power and your ship has despawned. But how this works is, this is a grid, this is a ship. So, with a server, as soon as anybody is not close to it, the grid gets uh, removed from basically in game the simulation running and gets uploaded or loaded into the, the server's uh, hard drive, saved on hard drive basically. So, it's not available anymore. Now, when, the, when, you, when, you lo when you log on and you are at your base, the server does a calculation and say, okay, X amount of power has been used, X amount of ore has been used, but grid movement will not be saved. So, for example, if you try to set up automated miner for with a remote block, automatically piloting back and forth to mine <laughs> for the two or three or four hours overnight while you're not there, uh, ship movement, grid movement is not calculated. Uh, now, the next big thing is why I have the window. 
uh, in the web. As you can see, we do have a few blocks out there that is weldable. Now, the problem would have been uh, if the welders don't just weld in front of them, they also weld to the sides, up sides, uh, upwards, to the left, to the right, below them. So, if this, if those specific blocks were, as it's coming along and it gets next to these blocks, it would have welded them. And then, of course, you can see coming from the right as soon as it gets close to this block it would start welding up these blocks and you can't keep on passing across it now this window does stop that problem it prevents the projection from being clear so it's not available for printing so uh, true enough at this whole moment we're going to be wasting time with the printer going back and forth uh, these specific blocks not being printed but as I said automated now as you've seen of the process so let's discuss the process while that is running through its loop I tried to make it a little bit more compact have extended pistons uh, these three that are now retracting but I also have these two that were compacted and now they are extending it saves a little bit of space makes it a little bit more compact the same with these two pistons. So this is my horizontal axis, uh, basically from left to right, right to left, running across these few, few pistons. But I also got my up and down uh, vertical axis running across these two pistons. And then on the other side, I have the ship's length it's going to be printed to, uh, through these ones that at the moment are extended and this five at the bottom that's uh, retracted uh, short so we have five pistons on top which is 10 meters per piston we have five pistons on the bottom sorry five pistons on top which is 50 meters five pistons on the bottom which is also 50 meters so we have 100 meters every block being two and a half meters we roughly got 90 blocks long 100 blocks 90 to 100 blocks long ship that can be printed in this uh, nine this model is 11 blocks high but effectively i'll probably be able to get a nine ten block ship printed uh, it can do probably do 11 uh, along that top line but I would play it safe and just keep them 9 by 9, 9 up. Uh, about 20 blocks across, uh, 21 blocks across, but also effectively, let's say 18, 19 to be on the safe side. But again, as far as, as long as the print, the welders can reach within its print zone, uh, you can print, but when you have a scenario, it just catches one, it's not going to print as fast weld up as fast as all five catching the blocks so the setup itself this would be my starting position I have a sensor one here the sensor is going to be off initially uh, when I start the first timer it's just going to activate the pistons to reverse so the vertical uh, horizontal pistons are just going to go across when it as the timer starts uh, instructs the horizontal pistons to move to reverse to extend it also switches on this sensor uh, which is set up to detect subgrids uh, don't want it to detect players i don't want to trigger any of them uh, so i just have it set up for subgrids and don't uh, detect owner, detect friendly, I'm okay with that. But also again, I'm not worried about enemies and neutrals. So when the print head comes across, it's gonna hit this point. I'm gonna activate it, uh, which is gonna activate a second set of timers. First timer is gonna instruct 
the horizontal printer to move up one step uh, for four or five seconds so that it reaches about this height and then a second time it triggers which is going to take it across this way now as you can see uh, it had reached the top this sensor now has switched on so the other thing the timers do is switches on the next sensor switches off the next sensor so when this one hits that corner the sensor will switch on wait for it to reach it trigger the timers and two timers per position first timer i've just got uh, got it on that it switches off that sensor one uh, starts the vertical climb for five seconds and when this point is reached this, uh, the timer also switches off this sensor and then we'll switch on that sensor and this whole process just basically loops around so it's gonna reach and trigger the timers first time it goes second time it starts the crossing process now if you remember this sensor was is on but this one had been off the first time we were here so it switched on this timer uh, the sensor this then head reaches here it will switch on this one uh, trigger this one timers will switch off this one switch on that one and start the loop process where the head starts going up so it's just going to go back and forth back and forth when it reaches this point uh, it also triggers another timer not just the loop down timer for the sensors and printer red itself but triggers another timer for this to move back and i think it needs a little bit more space um death stop did have it on two let's make it three Unfortunately, you can't do 2.5 or anything like that. So, just wanted to come back a little bit more. Uh, again, I'm going to waste the whole pass <laughs> if it does not clear the glass. So uh, if the glass, if it's too close to the glass, it's not going to weld those blocks. So it's going to do a whole loop waste, this loop session. And might as well make sure it saves it, does it well. Okay, so going through its next loop, these blocks seem to be reachable. Another thing that's important, if you're planning to print a ship like this, if you're manually welding or you've got a welder ship you can always come back and connect um, character tools so I could come back with a manual welder and catch this block now but because of the process anything that's now going to be popping up on a blueprint after it has passed this point of course it's not going to get printed so important thing to remember is basically plan your grids to build up from in this scenario front to back if you have anything that's going to loop back say for example like this where something else has to be built before this can be built uh, it's going to get missed which is of course very important with your internals and the main point of doing this is to make sure the internals get printed correctly also keep in mind if you have anything big like that uh, jump drive tanks anything that is going to take space and your blueprint has this has to be built first before the next block pops up uh, before that will show uh, you're gonna have a problem uh, because it will have to move 
far enough forward that that grid will show or get printed but if it's dependent on that being printed and something else then gets welded and then uh, goes backwards so for example we had this tank let me just get out of the way of the head there is this tank now say for, for example or actually there's h2 on that side h2 can be a good example of what could be a problem move along move along move along so yes h2 generator now h2 generator has connection points uh, for example this one and you can connect blocks to it but if I happen to have something now built here where this switch is and I have something there that doesn't that could not connect to this H2 generator because it's a non-attachable block there uh, you can't attach in some spots on H, uh, H2 generators but because I have a block here Technically speaking, this steel block, this block would have been connected to this one. So as I'm moving this projection away backwards, when we reach this point, whatever was now pro projected to be welded to this block um, is going to be missed by the time we reach here is where that H2 gen would get printed. And this internal block, whichever might have been attached to not the h2 generator itself but here to a block behind it would not get printed long story short make sure your blocks are built in a way placed in a way that it's weld weldable uh, in order back to front okay, so far it looks good nothing missed So as I said, just gonna loop across, hit that sensor, get kicked up uh, for four or five seconds, go across, hit the sensor, and then the whole thing resets. Now, because of this length, and because of just how sensors work, uh, I, I could finagle a little bit and put on something that it's only going to detect small grids so I can put on a let's say oh, sorry give me a sec thinking on the job so while we are recording this we got a rotor don't need a heavy expensive rotor but I do need something of course you can also use a hinge but just trying to be cheap PCU wise uh, because if you have a rotor this is 100 this is 100 but yeah, cost is the same sorry and hinge uh, that one is also 100 well basically because I know I'm not going to be doing transfers across uh, I'm not going to worry about it being a conveyor tube advanced rotor. All right, so rotor. Uh, I actually want to add a small rotor head. And let's be pretty. G lights. Uh, rotating lights uh, green and blue down a little bit more red radius is fine intensity um, 
it's okay it can be 0 0.05 doesn't have to run that fast and there well didn't have to come across here <laughs> force of habit this is where i've been trying to set up the timers okay so timer start the cycle set up action uh, rotating lights switch on just to show that the system is working actually i could have lots of warning lights around it now the reason i did put this one specifically here is this is now a small grid if i then go from here uh, let's say here okay just to make it look nice doesn't have to be an ugly ugly monster which is funny because i didn't really try to make it nice uh, and of course block collisions have been improved a lot but i have been playing this game for 2000 hours old habits stay <laughs> so back in the day long long ago um, block collisions were very close to each other so you would actually do this to make sure these things are not colliding if you did that uh, up right next to it it's not attached to this grid if you were building up right next to it in the old days you would actually literally have a clang it would be banging against each other so as i said five pistons a little bit of head mathematics here i have five pistons which is a total of uh, a total of 10 meters no, 100 meters uh, divided by 2.5 blocks maybe 40 blocks so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty yeah. 20, Forty-one. Forty-one. Ooh, come on. Forty-one, and this was nine up, if I remember correctly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So eighteen by eighteen vertical. One. Yeah, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, five sensor. So the thing I always keep in mind when I'm setting up a sensor, and this is going to take forever to reach it, is as I'm facing this, technically left is this side for the sensor right is that side up down so sensors right is my left my left is the sensors right so i can make this 0 0.1 you can't make it zero unfortunately as low as possible right, so basically what i want to do minimize this all of this back extent I do want it to go a little more, roughly a block length, just to make sure it does hit this, senses it, and the 
this is also a block so sensor stop uh, end of the build um, my left my right is my left here can go the full block 2.5 you can play it safe and say 3 it's not going to catch any other small grid um, bottom extent so if I'm looking at I'll show you in a second I also go on to go 3 and as this block is level with that in the back this is not going to bother me. Alright, so this sensor, as you heard, it was beeping because it was catching me. Um, not worried about owners. I do want it to take sub grid, small grid. Don't, not me, not players. Uh, yeah. Uh, technically speaking, you shouldn't even detect small grids. Need to detect small ships. But I do want it to take, well, I want it to take subgrids. The pistons is going to switch it off. Um, I do want it to take small grid. Or I can do it vice versa. Let's do it vice versa. Show that one also. Go over here. Just have it my marker. So when it reaches there, switch off. Mm. Left, right, but we're going to work down. Left can be zero, as low as possible. Bottom can... Yeah, it will detect it. Top extent is fine. Back extent is fine. Now, the one we want to use is bottom for the bottom of the sensor and I'll take that to 3 so basically what's going to happen I'm out of range out of range in range so as it's moving backwards the, that post there is going to be moving 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 and when it hits here sensor will detect it but I don't want it to detect players um, it can detect detect the station this is the station um, yeah, I'm not worried about detecting enemies with this sensor so when it reaches the back if I remember let me double check These ones are not used, but let's play it safe. So if I was going to switch this off. Call this. All systems stop. Yeah, it can be 5 seconds. Well, it still can even be the 10 seconds. It can keep on going past. Set up actions. Now, to stop this thing dead, um, all you actually have to do is just to switch off all sensors. Then, uh, horizontal. Oh, this is going to be tricky. I do want it... Hmm... Okay, so you guys are going to see me have to think a little bit about this one. So these two horizontals is, if I remember, horizontal one and horizontal two. And for this to move all the way to the left, these two have to extend.
So what did I say? This one has to extend, 2 has to extend, but 3 and 4 and 5 have to retract, then for this, oops, where am I, where am I, there we are. This one will have to extend, that's one, and this is two. Vertical one, as I said, will need to extend, vertical two will need to retract. And light oh. just double check that one will need to extend, yes, two will need to retract. One extend, two retract. Uh, extend, retract, and then switch off that light. I can throw a lot of lights around. Point to that. Show that the machine is running. So this has moved to there. Let's check. It needs a little bit more time on that timer. So um, death. So this is three, make it four. Because yes, we need it to clear so that this can get welded. And let's double check. Maybe too look too much. Sorry, wrong keys. So, just gonna squeeze, reverse, 1001, 1002, 1003. Three might be too much. Of three might be good. Um, timer depth. Let's just check that. Yes, this is a bit too much. Actually, way too much. Fine-tuning. Okay, depth timer stop. Let's go back to three seconds. Okay, depth. Let's see what we get. That looks good. I should have trusted three. looks too much question ask are we gonna print Seems to be catching them. Uh, 
this is a very good example again. This is not going to be printed by the printer because this iron thruster has to be printed first before this even gets printed and then this and then this and then this so yeah this is not going to get printed you could always go crazy and try to figure out how to get a circling system going around but that's going to be very specifically timer set up for a specific ship so that it goes out at this point so it can weld this and then go in to weld that this timer uh, I think that also makes it tricky is is this now 2.5 2.5 timers are tricky uh, a long distance setup like this is slightly tricky because you do have to make sure uh, you can't tell it you can't put a script and I know there are scripts that very specifically can do this tell it to move a specific distance uh, as we are building on a keen server uh, we won't be able to load scripts. We won't be able to tell it to very specifically go a X distance. And timer-wise also actually I would prefer to be under than over. Because if I'm over it's going to move too far away to weld blocks. Under I can miss a pass. We can miss a pass. Now, what would have been useful here is if I had, say for example, blocks that came over and touched this block from the initial weld to start this, then that would have welded these ones. So that's what I mean, plan it from back to front. If it's not connected from the front and depends on blocks from the back to build it, uh, yeah, then it's not going to work. It's not going to weld. So I'm just going to play a little bit. Touch there. One, two. Uh, just for the fun of it. Uh, uh, would, I don't think I would put lights on the server. Simply because I don't want to advertise this thing like crazy. Secondly, it's going to... Lights do cause some lag uh, so let's see rotating lights rotating lights this one was 250 did it save? it should have saved no it didn't rotating lights um, just make it sweet. Warning lights. Uh, so as I said, 250, 46, 0. I can leave that one high. Um, 250, 40, 0. And we set rotation speed comes 0.5. 0.5 and then that first timer start cycle groups double block on and then we can have that stop all set up actions groups off and then let me check that group something that's fine usually if you do get a thing like your G menu picture does not come up as the thing either small gr uh, small grid that it's a small grid light, that's why it's not coming up. 
So we have our warning lights running, which will switch off. Will visually show me at least the thing is printed, finished. Last pass on this side. Right, so I'm just going to let this run a bit. No, the video is already very long, so I'm going to let this run, but I'll fast forward it. 